Assalamu alaikum. We'll talk today about the benchmarking of HAI data. HAI benchmarking, it's a process of comparing oneself to others performing similar activities so we can continuously improve our services. Uh, the benchmark that is widely used is the NHSN or National Healthcare Safety Network, in the U, uh, which is composed of uh, data from U.S. hospitals. Uh, it is the oldest and the most widely used benchmark. Other surveillance networks are also there. Although benchmarking is appealing, comparison should be made only after ensuring certain conditions. Uh, so without these certain condition, benchmarking is invalid so when we are comparing we need to compare uh, apples with apples orange with orange not mixed fruits as you see this is a benchmarking uh, paper that we uh, we published uh, uh, several years ago and it will describe available benchmark for the data in the region and interpretation and challenges for each benchmark. So what are the benchmarking condition that we described in the earlier uh, slide? So to make benchmark valid comparison, you have to have a standardized case definition in both the benchmark and your data using similar data collection methods and tools. The population and the time period for the study is well-defined and adequate. The size of the population should be large enough uh, so the data created are valid and the duration should be sufficient enough to allow fair comparison. This is especially important for small hospitals that use shorter duration of, uh, of um, surveillance. Using same data description methods, and there is several ways of describing uh, or analyzing the data or using the metrics. So you need similar rate calculation, similar metrics, similar stratification by risk factor, similar stratification by hospital location, different types of ICU, ICU versus ward, similar adjusting methods, uh, and so on. Uh, again, using sound statistical comparison methods and ensuring patient confidentiality are uh, safeguarded. So what are the benchmarks available? As we said, the best, not the best one, the oldest and the, one, the most widely spread uh, used are across the world is, is the NHSN or the National Healthcare Safety Network in the US. Other benchmark that are widely used as well are International Nosocomial Infection Control Consortium and we will refer to this as INIC, European CDC, and we will refer to this ECDC. And the World Health Organization estimates from systemic analysis, systematic analysis. In the paper that we published, we uh, compared the four benchmarks uh, mentioned in the previous slide. Each one uh, has a specific advantage and disadvantage um, and we will go through them very lightly uh, so we can choose the, the, the we, we can understand uh, the validity of the benchmark. So I recommend that you uh, read this paper. It, it would give you a good impression about what does it mean benchmark and the benchmarks available um, and the advantage disadvantage of each one. So for, if we take the first one, NHSN, Uh, I suggest that you visit the website. Uh, there is a lot of resources, especially the manual, the training, the forms, and the case studies. So this is very essential uh, resource that is open for everybody. So I suggest first you go to this um, to this website and get familiar with the information for the material, uh, as I said, training, forms, manuals, and so on. So the NH NHSN structure uh, is secured internet-based surveillance system. In 2012, 
uh, it included more than 4,000 facilities. It's contributing uh, HAI data either voluntarily. Um, so the hospitals, uh, let me give you uh, the history of this sentence. So the hospitals at the beginning were voluntarily contributing to this NHSN, but later on uh, uh, in the last 10 years, the regulation start to appear that force the institutions to uh, submit data to NHSN, which is part of the uh, American CDC. While maintaining data security, integrity, and confidentiality, NHSN is sharing data in a timely manner between healthcare facilities and other entities like quality improvement organization. So this is one of the reports that is created by the American NHSN. And here they uh, publish uh, data summary for device associated uh, module, including CLABSI, VAB, and CAUTI. And as you see, the number of hospitals, the, the different types of hospital are contributing data to the 2012 uh, data for NHSN. As we said, the number is 4,000 plus hospitals, but the majority of these hospitals, almost 72%, uh, is uh, acute, uh, acute uh, trauma teaching hospital. So acute care hospitals are the majority of this hospital, but all types, including children, women, rehabilitation, oncology are included. The hospital uh, varies in size. Uh, and as you see, you have more than 500 uh, bid hospitals, and this represents uh, 5 uh, to 6%, uh, 200 to 520, 5 or 24%, 35%, 51 to 200, and 18% less than uh, 100, less than 50 uh, uh, beds. Uh, again, uh, acute care hospital represented a majority, maybe 84%. Uh, um, NHSN provide facilities with the risk adjusted rates and can be used for inter facility comparison and local quality improvement projects. Uh, conduct collaborative research studies with NHSN member facilities. Uh, example, uh, describe the epidemiology of emerging HAI. Uh, and pathogen, uh, res pathogen resistance as well, uh, characterize HII pathogens and their mechanism of action, and so on. The measures that you can find on NHSM publication, including the uh, CLEPSI events, sorry, the, the HII events, including CLEPSI, CAUTI, VAB, VAE, dialysis, and SSI. Device utilization, especially central line uh, uh, urinary catheter and ventilator. Consequences of uh, uh, HAI, uh, the major part is bacterial resistance and antimicrobial use as well. And this is uh, the CLABSI rate in NHSN. As you see, uh, the table is constructed in a way on the left side. You see the type of location usually uh, ICUs, uh, some uh, adult ward uh, present at the bottom, uh, number of locations, number of CLEPSI events detected, and the majority were detected from medical surgical ICU, as you see here in the first line, uh, central line days, and the uh, bold mean. Bold mean means the average over uh, all uh, medical surgical ICU. You have tons of this medical surgical ICU, and you have more than 50, say almost 1,600 uh, events detected uh, during uh, almost 2 million central line days. And this bring to uh, 0.8 uh, uh, event per 1,000 central line days in medical surgical ICU. And this is available across the other sites. So the use of this table is mainly using of the bold mean, which is the average uh, across all types of uh, ICU. So uh, the hospital may contribute more than one ICU type or single ICU type. So they collect not per hospital, but, but per ICU type. 
And if you look here, you will see the percentile on the right side. And this uh, started from 10, 25, 50, 75, and 90. And percentile is, uh, if we take the percentile of the medical surgical ICU, you will see that 10, 25, and 50 is zero. Uh, 75, 1.1 and 90 is 2.2. What does it mean? They arrange the uh, almost 2,000 or 1,900 locations for medical surgical ICU, ICU that contributed almost 1,600 uh, CLEPSI events. They, they arrange them from a lower to higher rate of CLEPSI. So at the 10 uh, percentile, you have you still have zero 25 percentile you still have zero 50 percentile you, ha you have zero at 75 percentile you start to have uh, hospitals or medical surgical icus that have a rate of 1.1 and the the highest 10 percent have the uh, medical surgical icu collapse rate 2.2 you may have uh, units that have a rate uh, up to five uh, but these are not included here because anything above 90 is considered uh, extremely high uh, or outlier. So above 90 means the top 90 uh, medical surgical ICUs with high rate in, in US. Uh, this graph is from the um, benchmarking paper I described at the beginning of the lecture. And as you see, uh, it, uh, it described the CLABSI, CAUTI, and VAB rate across the years. And NHSN um, uh, undergone major changes over the year from 1990 to 2010. It's two decades. And as you see, the rate markedly decreased to, uh, so the, the, the VAB rate, which was the highest, uh, was approximating all uh, the other, uh, all the HAI become around one or two uh, or uh, or even less uh, during these two decades. So there was cons consistent uh, decrease of rates over the years. And if you look also at uh, the SSI rate, it was uh, it is constructed in a way you see uh, on the most left the procedure code and then the procedure phone name. You see the cut point duration for the procedure, the risk index category, the number of hospitals contributing data, the number of procedure uh, reviewed for uh, SSI, and the number of SSI for each type uh, of surgery and each risk index category. When the data is more than 20 points, they describe also the percentile similar to the device associated uh, data. So what we can use here is the bold mean for uh, uh, SSI rate by risk index category and also the percentile when they are available again when enough data is contributed uh, to, is, uh, is contributed from the hospitals then they can uh, statistically able to create percentile otherwise they keep it blank. So this bold mean and uh, percentile is no, no, is no longer used by NHSN because they have more sophisticated uh, uh, risk index uh, or risk uh, adjustment for SSI rates. Uh, here uh, they published in 2009 and 11, and now on a day, on almost in a yearly basis, the NHSN SIR, rate, SIR rates. So they define a baseline period, then they, def uh, they create SIR for each, uh, um, uh, each state and as well as overall United States compared to this baseline so they can uh, follow the progress uh, of improvement of, uh, of CLEP, CVAP, CAUTI uh, over the years. Uh, and this is one example uh, from these reports and uh, you can see here CLEPSI uh, by ICU ward and neonatal ICU, CAUTI ICU ward, and SSI for different procedures. And here they uh, adjust each one 
uh, according to uh, the stratification. Yani for example, in CLEPSI, they adjust for uh, type uh, patient care location, uh, ICU ward or in ICU, bit size of the patient care location, hospital affiliation, and so on. For the neonatal ICU, they can further uh, adjust for uh, uh, the BSI rate and CLEPSI rate by uh, birth weight uh, category. Uh, for the SSI, they can adjust for procedure level risk factors, and this risk factors is different from uh, procedure to the other. Uh, as you know, uh, for the risk index category, it's only duration of the surgery, one the class, and ASA score. But here they add several others, including age, gender, uh, hospital affiliation, number of beds, uh, presence of diabetes, use of, uh, of uh, laparoscope, and so on. So looking at this data, uh, it is uh, 2011 HAI data that is compared to the baseline. The baseline for CLEPSI and SSI was 2006-2008, and for CAUTI, it was 2009. If you look here at CLEPSI part, you have observed and expect, uh, an expected number of CLEPSI. So you have observed 18,000 uh, events, and you have expected more than 30,000 based on the baseline 2006 and 2008. So the SIR is 0.59, which is almost 60% of the rate of the baseline, which is big improvement, almost 40% reduction of the CLEPSI rate. And you can look for CAUTI and other uh, measurement in the same way. Additionally, here they give you the number of facilities that are significantly different from the baseline. Uh, we know that uh, above one means uh, a higher rate, blue one is lower rate compared to the baseline. However, they here only include hospital, they are significantly lower or significantly higher than the baseline. This slide also show you that uh, you can, on the most right part, you get the percentile for the SAR for different hospitals. And now uh, you can know that, for example, the median is uh, 50, 47 percent uh, SIR, but you have also SIR that actually increased on the 90 percentile. It become 1.28, so it's 28 higher than the baseline. So not all hospitals have the same uh, SIR, but this is the average, as you see, uh, bold mean and the median 50 percentile. Uh, and you can uh, check your hospital uh, between 10 or 25 or 25 and 50 or whatever. Uh, so you can compare yourself to the other hospitals uh, in the country. So the advantage of uh, advantages of NHSN, it's large data that allow multiple stratification, use of standardized definitions and methodology, studying ICU and non-ICU locations, it's electronic data uh, uh, based uh, 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 electronic data entry, uh, and it is uh, uh, internet connected. All hospitals are connected through the internet. What are the limitations of NHSN? It's frequent change of definitions and methods, and we have uh, 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 we have experienced this, especially in the duration between 2000. Uh, 13 and 2018, there is multiple changes. Still, there is a changes on a yearly basis. They they uh, make it official on January of every year, but the changes are much less important than before. Dialysis infection and antimicrobial use reports are released, but less less frequently. Uh, uh, also, no adequate adjustment for for patient risk. It is only the location and few risk factors, uh, other risk factors. Uh, yeah, for example, uh, adjustment for SSI is much more advanced than advanced adjustment of device associated. Not a true cohort, uh, which epidemiological limit comparing data over time, ignoring non-device associated HAI, such as 
non-ventilated pneumonia. So it, it, it focus only on device associated HAI and procedure associated HAI, which is SSI. Uh, although validity improved over the years, but validity of reported data are not determined yet or not sufficient. We, we should say not adequate, uh, better. Looking at INIC, which is the International Nosocomial Infection Control Consortium, um, the, the INIC is international nonprofit open uh, multi-center collaborative healthcare associated infection control surveillance system. Uh, it was founded in Argentina in 1998 by Dr. Rosenthal. And the, uh, as they said in their publication, they follow the NHSN methodology. And in 2011, they reported 42, 400 something, 400 plus ICUs from 36 countries distributed mainly in Latin America, but also in Asia, Africa, Europe, Eastern Europe, uh, participating in their uh, in their data. So, as you see from this map, uh, it's across the world, and uh, the the main uh, the main uh, shared criteria for all these countries they are uh, developing countries or uh, low medium uh, income countries. Uh, for the measures, they they actually uh, similar to the NHSN. They report HAIs, device utilization, uh, uh, but additionally they report uh, mortality, length of stay, cost, hand hygiene, preventive bundles. But there is no much data about antimicrobial use. And this is the report that was uh, released in 2014. It includes 43 countries uh, and include data from 2007 to 2012. Uh, although there is a more recent publication released in the last couple of years, uh, but uh, the reports from INIC used to report cumulative data over the years. Uh, and uh, this has several limitations. One of them is the changes in definition uh, uh, of NHS in definition across the years cannot be accommodated in the same report. And for example, CLAPC rate here include LCBI, which is DAP confirmed, and uh, uh, and clinical sepsis, which is not lab confirmed. And this is uh, unreliable to tell you the truth unreliable to uh, compare it with the current uh, collapse rate that we know right now one of the best tables uh, released in uh, INIC is the table that uh, estimate the crude mortality and crude attributable mortality for different device associated HI including CLAPSI, CAUTI and VAB uh, and if you look at this uh, slide, for example, if you take CLAPSI, they have at the beginning crude mortality in patients without any HAI, uh, which is 10%, and crude mortality in patients with CLAPSI, which is 24.7%. Uh, and crude excess mortality, which is called attributable mortality, crude attributable mortality in patients with CLAPSI, which you can get by subtracting the 10 from the 24.7, you get 14.7. So having CLEPSI increased the mortality by 14% in these developing countries uh, over uh, the patient who do not have, is hospitalized but do not have HAI. Also comparing uh, in different types of ICU, CLEPSI, CAUTI, VAB, uh, in the most common types of ICU, including medical, cardiac, medical, surgical, pediatric, neonatal uh, ICU. Uh, and as you see, they compare the INIC data with NHSN data, and consistently the INIC data is two or three folds higher than the NHSN data. The GCC benchmark. Can we have GCC benchmark? The answer is simply yes, because we have a standardized case definition that follow the NHSN definition, 
we use identical surveillance methodology to uh, uh, important bench benchmarks. We use similar data collection tools. We have large population surveyed for a sufficient duration in the region because most of the hospitals now are having infection control uh, departments and surveillance data. We have a tool to pull data from different hospitals and countries. We have the ability to calculate risk adjusted rates. We have the ability to report sound statistical comparison. So we have all the condition that create good benchmark so we can have a GCC benchmark. Actually, we already uh, published uh, three reports out of this uh, GCC data. We will share it with you uh, now. So this is an example of the data that we uh, collect in uh, uh, King Abdul Aziz Medical City in Riyadh, which is the National Guard Hospital. We have manual for surveillance data, and this manual now it's, it is in its third edition. We're planning to have um, a fourth edition uh, soon. Also, uh, the MOH is creating a very updated surveillance manual. We have uh, data collection tools that uh, are um, standardized across the region. And also the, uh, the MOH right now is offering HSN system for hospitals to report data about HAI. Uh, we have uh, training courses uh, uh, across the region about infection control surveillance. Uh, we can have uh, tools to pull data and create uh, a standardized uh, rates for HAI. Uh, we have created the memorandum of understanding to um, uh, collect the data from different uh, countries, uh, sorry, different hospitals inside the region. Uh, and uh, this is for MOH is uh, is very easy because they control uh, 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 more than a hundred hospital. They can contribute data to the HSN, HSN system, uh, which make it much easier than doing this uh, manually from each hospital. This is some of the collaborating uh, centers that collect the data together. Uh, so we created GCC benchmark. This was a few years ago. Now, as I said, MOH is, is collecting data uh, from several hospitals and published this data. So it's much advanced than uh, this. So uh, for the GCC benchmark for VAB, uh, we, you can see here in this graph the years of the data used in uh, uh, GCC, which is in the red color. We have data from 2008-2013. And during publication of this paper, we have also data uh, from uh, INIC uh, and NHSN. For the NHSN, uh, we have uh, data from 2006 to 2012, and we have INIC data 2006-2009. So what we can see from this data, which represented a VAB rate per 1,000 ventilator days, that the consistently the GCC rate is between uh, the INIC and NHSN rates. It's actually lower than the INIC, which, which represent mostly developing countries, but higher than uh, NHSN, which represent US hospitals. So we created SIR uh, compared to this uh, benchmark, uh, the other benchmark. And for the NHSN, uh, we, for, for VAB, it is 3.17, which means it is 2.2 folds higher than NHSN. And when we created uh, uh, VAB SIR for GCC, region compared to INIC, uh, we are, we, the SIR is 0 .0, uh, 0, 0 0.31, which means it is 
uh, about 69 or 70 uh, lower than the ionic rate. The, this has been published in the American Journal of Infection Control as a major article that show the uh, uh, GCC rates for VAB is much lower than INIC but uh, higher than NHSN rates. And if you look at this graph, the upper part is comparing to NHSN and the lower part comparing to uh, the INIC. For the upper part, we, we, the, the, this uh, dark part uh, represent the excess uh, rate compared to NHSN, while the dark part and the lower uh, part of the graph, the dark uh, bars in the lower part of the graph, represent the reduction of the rate compared to INIC uh, uh, data for FAB. Uh, we repeated the same uh, the same VAB uh, benchmarking uh, uh, data for the GCC countries. We repeated this for uh, county, and we got very similar result or somewhat similar result, where the um, the county rate is lower than the INIC but higher than the NHSN, but the difference is much reduced, and actually more recent data are similar or even lower than NHSN. So uh, th this was, was a very interesting data for county. And the actual data uh, comparison to NHSN showing only 30% higher than NHSN. Compare this for 2.2 folds higher VAB rate in GCC countries compared to NHSN. So the higher rate of county then NHSN is very much lower than the higher rate of VAB compared to the NHSN. And we, we, when we compared this to INIC, the SIR was 0.61, which again means that the lower rate than INIC is, is, much, uh, is uh, similar or lower than the lower rate of VAB compared to the INIC. So in county, in, in, in short, county rate comparison to INIC and NHSN has lower values difference and uh, lower dif values of difference compared to uh, the VAP. Similarly, this has been published in the American Journal of Infection Control as a major article about the county rate in GCC countries um, and uh, several findings were found. So if you look at the left side, it is the excess GCC rate compared to the NHSN. Uh, this is the GCC 3.2, NHSN 2.2, and the excess is 32%. On the right side, it is the reduced GCC risk for uh, county compared to the INIC, and it's actually the black part 39% uh, reduction. Uh, the last paper that has been published from the GCC data is the CLAPSI data, and it is very similar to the VAB data, where it's much, much lower than INIC, but slightly higher than uh, NHSN. And when you compare the CLAPSI data to the NHSN, we have 2.46. SIR, which means 1.5 1 folds higher than NHSN. And when we, when we compare this to the NHSN, so to the INIC, uh, the SIR is 0.67, which means it is 33 lower than uh, INIC data. And this is CLAPSI SIR rate uh, for GCC countries when we compare the neonatal ICU in, in, in the GCC region to the NHSN in the top bar and INIC in the lower bar. As you see, this table is uh, uh, stratified by the birth weight groups, uh, less or equal to 750 grams, 751 to 1000, 1001 to, 5, to 1500, 1500 to 2, uh, 2500, and above 2500. It's five birth weight groups and the SIR here is adjusting for the different uh, birth weight groups because 
lower birth weight group is is traditionally associated with higher risk of clepsy and as you see uh, compared to the uh, nhsn it is uh, the sir is 3.62 which means 2.6 hi uh, times higher than nhsn which is a big uh, difference uh, but compared to INIC, uh, the the data is almost similar so uh, neonatal clepsy in gcc region is similar to INIC, but uh, much, much uh, higher than uh, NHSM. Similarly, this has been published in American Journal of Infection Control as a paper about the rate of uh, CLEPSI in GCC region compared to other benchmark. Uh, and in the paper, uh, the top part compared to NHSN, uh, obviously, uh, there is a much higher rate uh, for all types of ICU, for neonatal ICU, for oncology work. This is the first paper that we included uh, war data, oncology war data, uh, irrespective, all ICU are included, neonatal ICU only, or ward data, uh, our data is higher than NHSN. Uh, the, the excess uh, uh, rate above the NHSN is lower in the oncology, uh, uh, higher in neonatal, and average in uh, uh, all ICUs together. Uh, the lower part of the graph compared to GCC to INIC, and as you see for all types of ICU, it is 33 lower than INIC, but if you include neonatal ICU only, it is very similar, almost exactly similar to INIC. Thanks.